know whether to focus on me or... I'm an ult. What's going on guys, it's Salvaje and as you guys saw by those two small gameplay examples, the Interceptor Javelin is definitely a top tier Javelin in Grandmaster 1 and above. This build can dish out up to 500,000 damage within a 12 second window. Sometimes within a 10 second window if of course you have the right teammates supporting you. Furthermore, I also just want to point out that this build not only maximizes the damage you're going to be able to provide with your interceptor when it comes down to weapons, but also gear damage, and this build also specializes on melee damage, believe it or not. I want to point out that if your movement sucks with the interceptor, you're not going to be able to fully maximize this build, and if that is the case, make sure that you check out my advanced movement guide for the interceptor, and if you need to anthem, make sure that you check out my basic movement guide for the interceptor as well. That video will be linked in the description below. Now for the first section of this video, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you guys need to know about this build and of course how we're going to make it work. For the second section of this video, which starts at around the 10 minute mark, I'm going to be bringing you guys actual gameplay examples that are going to teach you of course how to maximize this build. And again guys, you're not going to be able to use this build if your interceptor movement sucks, so make sure that you check out my advanced movement guide for the interceptor. Anyways, I'm sorry for taking your time, let's get straight into the video. Also guys, a like on the video would be highly appreciated. As you guys know, I'm a small channel and I need all the help I can get. On top of all that, my 100 tips video on Anthem is in the description below. Make sure that you check that out, zero story spoilers and everything you need to know about the game. And my 100 javelin tips video of course will also be coming soon. Anyways, enough talk, enough bullshit, let's get straight into the build. Let's focus on the weapons. We're going to be having two Truth of Tarsus sniper rifles, or of course, two Devastators. Okay guys, it's post commentary salvaje. I forgot to mention something important on my live commentary. So you absolutely need at least one Truth of Tarsus if you want this build to be viable. However, in Grandmaster 2, you absolutely need two of them. Another thing that I want to point out is that the reason why the Truth of Tarsus is a must for this build is because when you hit an enemy weak point, when an enemy is under a status effect, the Truth of Tarsus is going to set off a chain combo. In other words, you're going to be getting combo-like damage from your Truth of Tarsus. Lastly, keep in mind that this is a GM1 and GM2 build. However, I'm pretty confident that I can easily uh, take this build to GM3 uh, with all legendary components and of course legendary Truth of Tarsus, etc, etc. But long story short, not a lot of people are on GM3 right now. And I think there's a lot of improvements that I can add to this build for GM3. And of course, when I do do that, I'll make a video on it. Now, I just want to point out that if you want to use this build at Grandmaster 1, you at least need one Masterwork level component, which we're going to get to soon. But first, let's talk about the weapon. Like I said, we're going to be using two Truth of Tarsus sniper rifles. And the reason why this build is able to work out so well, because I have a total of 23 bullets between both of my snipers combined. And on top of all that, ammo is always dropping for me, so I'm always able to, of course, refill my ammo. So I'm never going to be running out of ammo, believe it or not, with these two sniper rifles. One of the reasons why I'm not going to be able to run out of ammo is because, as you guys can see by this inscription or perk right here, I have 65% more ammo when it comes down to my weapons. Now, another thing that makes this build really deadly is, of course, having a Truth of Tarsus. Either one of your Truth of Tarsus have, of course, the weapon damage perk. My second Truth of Tarsus is, of course, able to have the 125% uh, percent extra damage, of course, to my weapons, which is why my Truth of Tarsus sniper rifles are going to be hitting, of course, really, really hard. Now that we covered the weapons, of course, let's move on forward to, of course, the gear. All right, let's start off with Assault System. We're going to be using the Venom Bomb, or the Masterwork version of the Venom Bomb, Serpent's Veil. And long story short, the reason why we're going with the Venom Bomb is because it's going to be increasing the damage that we can do to enemies since Acid is going to be, of course, decreasing the enemy's resistance by, I believe, 75%. 
On top of all that, when you have your Venom Bomb, you ideally want to have a perk or an inscription in your Venom Bomb that increases gear damage. So for example, my Venom Bomb works really, really well with my Tempest Kick because, as you guys can see, my gear damage is increased by 75%. Like I said earlier, this build does take advantage of the melee that the Interceptor brings into the table. And as you guys can see right here, melee weapon defeats increases all asset damage by 100% for 10 seconds, which means that of course enemies will be taking a little bit of more asset damage of course when we throw our Venom Bomb at them, if of course we get a melee weapon defeat. Let's move on forward to the strike system and for the strike system it's pretty obvious we're going to be going with Sudden Death or the Masterwork version of Tempest Strike. And uh, the reason why we're going with Tempest Strike is because one, it's going to add a ton of mobility, but on top of all that, hitting an enemy detonates a fire explosion, which means that we're going to be able to get a little bit of AoE damage, of course, from our Tempest Strike. Now, when it comes down to perks or inscriptions that you want for your Tempest Strikes, ideally, you want to have the Sniper Ammo perk, because this is going to be giving you more ammo for your Truth of Tarsus Sniper Rifles. As you guys can see right here, I have 25% extra ammo for my uh, snipers. When it comes down to the support system, we're going to be going with Target Beacon. It's pretty simple. It locks onto a target. If you defeat the target, of course, it goes onto another target. But on top of all that, Target Beacon is also really good because it reduces enemy resistance by 33%, which means you're going to be able to do a little bit of extra damage on high priority targets. And of course, and most importantly, bosses as well. And as you guys can see, when it comes down to the inscription that we have for Target Beacon, we have 13% more ammo for our sniper rifles. That's right. Anyways, let's move on forward to components. So the bottom component is going to be survival algorithm. It's going to be increasing our maximum shields by 35% and decreases our health by 35%. Now, if you guys saw my interceptor advanced movement video, you're basically going to know how to move from one target to the next in GM1 plus and striking them at melee range and then being able to escape without taking any damage at all whatsoever. So basically the fact that we have 35% less health won't matter because we have 35% less shields and of course that means we're not going to be able to of course um, you know get any status effects on us. And of course sniper rifle damage and sniper rifle ammo when it comes down to the inscriptions that's what's going to be helping us out even more with this build. Anyways up next we have Vengeance Matrix increases all damage dealt by 50% and we take 25% less damage. But on low health, all damage is increased by 25% for 5 seconds. And that's when this build with the Interceptor starts getting very deadly. Next, we have Way of the Salvage. Increases weapon magazine size by 30%. And ammo drop rate by 50%. And that's why we're never going to run out of bullets for our double Truth of Tarsus. Because we're always going to be getting ammo for the Truth of Tarsus. But wait, it gets better, right? We're always going to be collecting that ammo with the, for the Truth of Tarsus by triple dashing, right? And guess what happens when you collect ammo? Your weapon damage is increased by 40% for 5 seconds. But wait, there's more. Elusive Talisman increases weapon damage by 25%. Dashing 3 time instantly refills your magazine. And at the time we'll be making this video, it also refills the magazine for the weapon that you have in reserve. So that's even more overpowered. It gets even better, guys. We have Conductive... Lattice increases electricity damage, electricity resistance, and gear cooldown. Performing a small melee hit streak, in other words, you hit an opponent three times, detonates an electric explosion, and of course, that is of course going to be helping us out when of course we are trying to maximize our melee. And then of course we have Way of the Resolve. Increases interceptor melee damage by 10%, but dashing three times. I mean, dashing increases the melee damage by 40% for 10 seconds, but I recommend that you guys dash three times so that, of course, you have will the resolve for longer. So let's talk about some perks that you can replace and some perks that you cannot replace real quick. You can replace Conductive Lattice if you want, and if you want, you can also replace will the resolve or Survival Algorithm. There are two perks. I mean, there are three perks that I would not replace in this build at all, and that is Vengeance Matrix, Way of the Salvage, and to make this build work, you absolutely need Elusive Talisman because the ability to instantly re reload the Truth of Tarsus is what makes this weapon such a high damaging DPS build. Now, two Masterwork components that you can replace is, um, you know, from this uh, build that I have here, is uh, Way of the Bold is a really good Masterwork component to have in this build because melee killing an enemy restores 20% health. On top of all that, you guys can also have Way of Integration 
and basically what that does is that if you hit two enemies with uh, gear damage, uh, all of your damage is increased by 30%. And if I were to get that, I would be replacing that with a survival algorithm because honestly, I don't need the extra shields and health on DM2. I'm honestly pretty good. I rarely take damage on DM2+. Now, just to give you guys a quick summary, all of these masterwork components increase, and of course, the Truth of Tarsus that has 125% extra sniper damage gives us a total of 265 extra damage for, of course, our Truth of Tarsus sniper rifles. On top of all that, when it comes down to components, as you guys can see, I have ammo drop rate for Way of Salvage, which increases the rate in which I get ammo way more. I have sniper rifle ammo for one of the perks as well. Sniper rifle ammo twice for elusive talisman, which is going to give us, of course, more ammo for our sniper. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now that I broke down the build, now we're going to be jumping into some gameplay examples. And I'm going to be teaching you guys how to fully maximize this build. All right, so let's get into the gameplay examples. I'm not going to break down my movement as much because I already broke down my advanced movement with the interceptor on my advanced movement guy. But this is why I love this build so much. I was able to do 10,000 damage on that shield. Another, well, another 9,000 damage. And now 10,000 damage on the shield. I single-handedly brought down the shield that this guy had. Uh, basically by myself. I put down a targeting beacon on him. And of course, I overheat. I actually didn't mean to do this, but I go for the Venom Bomb Tempest Kick combo. And of course, I hit them. I hit him with a melee a couple of times because I do have the Way of Resolve Strength, which increases, of course, our melee damage by about 40%. I see the shotgun guy in here. He's not going to be much of a problem because I'm going to position myself in this cover right here. So if he is to hit me for some pretty decent damage, I can, of course, get into the cover and jump straight into this Elementalist. And as you guys can see right there, I didn't land my Truth of Tarsus on this enemy. But the splash damage on the Truth of Tarsus is so huge that it really doesn't matter. I have my Will of Resolve Strength, of course, turned in for that extra melee damage. But, of course, uh, it ran out. So it's okay. I'm going to throw down my Venom Bomb. I'm going to, you know, hit him with the Acid Effect, which is going to, of course, be increasing the damage that he's going to be taking. And I position myself in a position where I'm able to have a general view of the area. And, of course, I'm able to snipe this guy down. Venom Bomb, Tempest Kick, of course, that's going to be finishing him off. And as you guys can see, I'm going to Triple Dot, and both of my Truth of Tarsuses are going to be instantly reloaded. Now I'm going to dash onto these guys, I'm going to throw my Venom Bomb, I'm going to Tempest Kick, and as you guys are seeing, I have Mauler's Venom turned on, which means that all of these guys that are enwrapped in Acid, they're going to be having, uh, they're going to be receiving, I mean, increased damage from my Venom Bomb Acid. On top of all that, guys, keep in mind, again, every time that I dodge, that Will of Resolve Strength activates, which increases my melee damage. Like I did point out at the beginning of this video, this build does take advantage of the fact that, you know, you can um, uh, capitalize on melee. I see this uh, dude hiding back here, so I double jump twice towards him, and I look him in the face, and I kill him with pure intimidation. Now this gameplay example is going to be showing you guys how I maximize gear damage and melee damage with this build. And this upcoming gameplay example right here is going to show you guys why you need to master movement with the Interceptor if you want to be reliable in Grandmaster 1 and above with this build. I make it from one side of the map to the next, I throw down my Venom Bomb, my Tempest Kick Explosion is able to take out three enemies, I have Way of Resolve turned on which means that I'm going to be having 40% more increased melee damage. And as you guys can see, I am literally meleeing these enemies in Grandmaster 2. Just as if I was playing the game on easy, for example. And it's basically taking me no effort. Now, here I'm going to maximize my gear again. I see three enemies. I'm going to Venom Bomb, Tempest Kick. Then it's going to cause a fire explosion that's going to take out the guy to the right. And then, of course, I'm going to melee these soldiers right here. But I realize they got shield, so I take on my Truth of Tarsus. And I am able to basically delete this dude, as you guys are seeing in the gameplay example. Alright, now on this example, I'm going to be showing you guys how I use my movement to always position myself for success. Specifically with the Truth of Tarsus on my abilities. I know this guy is under a status effect from my Venom Bomb, so I land a headshot on him on my Truth of Tarsus. But then out of nowhere, my health just goes down, and I realize that it was probably because of a sniper. So I use my movement to, of course, position myself in a position where I am able to, you know, better grasp the situation. 
I take out this guy because I know he's most likely going to be dropping a health pack. And of course, I use my sniper to do some pretty decent damage to these guys at the top. I see the sniper that was able to do some damage towards me. I position myself into cover with my movement. I Tempest Kick this guy because I want to get a little bit of extra health. And every three hits, I'm triggering an, an electricity explosion. So I use that electricity explosion on this enemy. And of course, I take out his shields thanks to that electricity explosion. Venom Bomb, Tempest Kick, and I'm going to finish him off with my melee without my melee having any buffs and again people say that melee with the interceptor on gm2 is bad but it's not a big deal i'm gonna triple dodge i'm gonna cancel uh, i mean i'm gonna instantly reload my truth of tarsus i'm gonna take out my second truth of tarsus land a headshot on this kid and of course put him under a status effects team up with my colossus because it is grandmaster 2 you know teammate i mean teamwork is necessary at this level and as you guys can see, we're able to basically just take out all of the enemies in this area very easily. And I was able to help out my teammate very, very well as well. Now, you're not always going to be able to capitalize on close range combat with the Interceptor, specifically when there are a lot of enemies in play. And that's what I like about this build, right? It's very adaptable. If you can't use close quarters combat, you can always go for long range combat with the double truth of Tarsus. And of course, uh, you know pull off a combo from time to time or set up combos for your teammates with of course your venom bomb right here I throw my venom bomb and of course I'm able to finish off these two guys with a combo and then I'm going to use my movement as an interceptor to position myself at a position where I'm going to be able to of course take care of enemies and of course also dish out some damage I throw down my acid bomb to set these enemies under an elemental effect and then of course take advantage of my truth of Tarsus combo like damage and as you guys can see, I'm going to be constantly swapping Truth of Tarsus, activating Triple Dodge so that I get the instant reload. I see my Colossus closing in, I'm going to throw down a Venom Bomb, and of course my Colossus is going to be landing a huge combo on these guys that's going to be of course taking out a lot of adds. Now, right here, I see that, uh, you know, these enemies are set up for a combo as well because they're close range, but I of course see some enemies uh, to my left, so I of course purposely decide to go out. And of course, position myself at another position where I can land a combo. So I throw down a Venom Bomb here. I go for a Tempest Kick. And then I activate my ultimate. Why did I activate my ultimate? Because enemy AI and Anthem is super dumb. And sometimes they're so hard-headed, they only want to focus on one target. So when you activate your ultimate with the Interceptor, make sure that you're, activa you're activating it on targets that, of course, uh, want to be focusing you if you're at close range. These Enforcers right here have no idea whether to focus on my teammates or on me. They decide to focus on me, and of course, my teammates are going to be able to capitalize right now on a combo, as you guys are going to be seeing right about now. As you guys can see, a lot of damage uh, dished out to those uh, guys, and then of course, that lets me go in with my Venom Bomb, and of course, go in for a Tempest Kick. I am, my health is pretty low, but it's okay, I'm going to position myself in a position where I'm safe, and of course, I'm going to be, of course, landing critical damage shots with my Truth of Tarsus, and I'm going to be instantly reloading them, of course, with the Triple Dash. Just, of course, to be able to, you know, take out these uh, enforcers as fast as possible. And that's going to be the end of those enforcers. As you guys saw, I was constantly moving. I was using my Truth of Tarsus to dish out some great damage to the enforcers. But also, of course, to dish out some great damage to the enemies that were around the area and the vicinity as well. So let's move on forward to another example that happens later on in this gameplay. Alright, so this example is going to show you guys the amazing DPS capabilities that this thing has into the table when you can actually aim really, really well. I missed the second shot, but it hits for 17,000 because of splash damage. And of course, I start landing uh, critical uh, weak point shots on these enforcers. And as you guys can see, that enforcer basically just got deleted. I see an enemy here. I'm going to use my movement to triple dodge into a Venom Bum Tempest Kick. And of course, I see this enforcer right here. And of course, uh, my teammates do want to take care of this Enforcer as fast as possible. He has been giving us a uh, problem for a while. So I'm going to target beacon him. And then, uh, I don't know what happened here. I guess uh, my triple dodge didn't really register. It didn't reload my weapon. Whatever. It's not going to be a big deal. As you guys can see, I'm going to be uh, reloading my weapon. And of course, hitting 72k plus damage shots on this Enforcer. And he's easily going to be, you know, taken out. So let's move on forward to Stronghold. You know, let me bring you guys one Stronghold example when it comes down to boss encounters. And of course, then we're going to end up the video. All right, so let's move on to Strongholds. And this is why this is one of my favorite builds on Grandmaster 2 with the Interceptor. And why I think it's one of the best builds that we have right now. 
for the interceptor because it's able to you know dish out top tier dps including on end game activities that are harder like strongholds i just hit a 142,000 shot two times in a row and the third shot that i hit was 162,000 damage in other words top tier dps that the interceptor actually needs when it comes down to fighting bosses like this boss in the tyrant mine look at that that was a 65,000 damage shot long story short when it comes down to boss damage as you guys are seeing by these gameplay examples i'm clearly putting in my weight despite the fact that i'm an interceptor and my abilities are going to be basically next to useless when it comes down to this boss Let's go over one last gameplay example and I just want to let you guys know I'm going to be doing a full walkthrough of the Tyrant Mine using this build in the future. So of course be on the lookout for that so that you guys can see how I maximize this build on of course Strongholds. But right here the boss turns his back on me and I'm able to capitalize on that. I'm going to be using my interceptor movement to get from one area of the map to the next. The boss still has his back on me. It's going to take a while for him to turn back and it is basically enough for me to revive my teammates Stratusborn and of course get out of danger using of course the interceptor movement. Again, if you're dying in Grandmaster 2 with the interceptor, it's because your movement needs a little bit of improvement. Anyways, right here I'm going to just land a combo which is just going to be enough for me to get my ultimate and then I'm going to capitalize on my movement, activate my ultimate and as you guys can see, that's right, I'm going to be reviving both of these two teammates. Basically an almost lost situation but I was able to turn it around thanks to the movement that the Interceptor had and of course the uh, utility that this build also brings into the table. With Venom Bomb and Tempest Kick and you know damaging enemies I am going to be able to of course do some pretty decent damage to enemies that of course I'm going to be able to get my ultimate at a respectable rate in Strongholds. But again you guys are going to be seeing that when I do my walkthrough of this uh, Stronghold with this build. Anyways, right here I see that the boss is ready to receive a lot of damage. I'm going to hit him up with my Venom Bomb and then of course I'm going to start landing as many critical hits with my Truth of Tarsuses as I can and the boss simply just cannot recover from this. I see him jumping away but of course I'm going to put myself at a position where I'm still going to be able to damage him with my Truth of Tarsus bullets. But anyways guys, that is pretty much it for my Gregora build, for my Double Truth of Tarsus build for the Interceptor. If you guys found this guide helpful, let me know in the comment sections below and of course let me know if you guys want to see more build guides and how you guys want it to be structured do you guys want less explanation of the build and just giving you guys the explanations with gameplay examples or do you guys want me to break down the build and then give you guys the gameplay examples let me know in the comments i would really appreciate that feedback because i want my build videos to be the best build videos in all of anthem see you guys in the next one and i hope you guys found this video information and helpful and please drop the video a like